Hello my brothers and sisters of nerdiness and welcome back to the spider's web. In this video we're going to be painting this cute little cavalier spaniel and we're going to be doing it in specific colours because this one is based on a real dog. The dog belongs to a friend of mine and <coughs> this, this mini is going to him. Um, the reason being is because, well, I have to. <laughs> the one in the brown base, which I have in my right hand there, is from the Dungeons and Doggies expansion. This is from the Animal Adventures RPG starter set, which you may remember me opening a few months ago. Anyway, this dog, as I say, is going to a friend of mine, and the colour scheme for the dog is going to be based on his own dog called Honey, who is a cavalier king child spaniel so he sent me a few reference photographs but unfortunately um <coughs> the reference photographs show the body and the face so only the face ones will be able to use because there is clothing on this dog and you can't see the body markings so <coughs> we will have to go as we can anyway this particular mini in the game is called elvis he's a cavalier bird and yeah that's all i can say about for the introduction let's get started speed up the video and get going right so this is a very speeded up video um we're going to do this uh the whole of the dog is going to be painted white now i'm not going to go into any detail in colors it'll just be white red orange blah 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 um i will be doing the other uh, video of the other mini on video showing more detail in what I'm doing why I'm doing it and uh, I will be doing the base on that one um, the basic way just because I'm keeping the base for the other one attached this one I'm going to remove the dog from the base and make its own scenic base so um, yeah this one's going to be fun so all the fur for the dog is going to be painted white, as I said, because I want a nice colour to work on. Nice flat colour to work on. I've already primed this grey and give it a bit of a spray over with white, but it's not very... Mm, it's not a very flat covering. Um, I only did a light cover, cover for it, so... Uh, yeah, let's just give it a proper base coat to work on, shall we? It works out easy if you do that. So I may or may not actually uh, show you the paint on this. I'm sure you saw. I may uh, I'm not. Sure, I don't know whether I show you all. I cannot remember. But uh, the colouring we're going to be using for the markings on the dog is, as you just saw, Jakira Orange from Citadel. Um, now Honey has uh, this brown spot, brown patch over her eye and I think she has one on the other eye as well I couldn't quite make it out but I'm going to do it as though she has um, and I'm going to put a little bit around her mouth but wipe it off because I just want it to look as though um, it's uh, showing a bit of depth rather than actually um, being a colour I just want to give it a different tone around the mouth because sometimes on white, white dogs especially you get that brownish, greyish colouring around the mouth, and uh, that's what I'm trying to show there. So, yeah, ears and the white patches on the face, um, they're all going to be coloured in this uh, Jakira orange because it's the one that closely matches the colour of Honey, my friend's dog. So, uh, I'll pop a little bit down there as well on the chest. I couldn't quite tell whether it was shadow or whether it was marking, so I'm going to go for it was a marking. Right, dirt splatter is what we're going to use for the eyes because it's a nice brownish colour to use for the eyes. Now I've struggled with this trying to see the eyes though, so what I've done is I have um, a rectangular magnifying lens that I brought down um, as well as I could and uh, trying to see what I'm doing and trying to have it on camera was difficult though so I had to give way to the camera to the lens uh, just so I can see what I'm doing I still couldn't quite get it right but yeah never mind I tried 
the lens and the camera doesn't work together. <laughs> anyway, I'm just trying to adjust the camera position so you can see what I'm doing. I will miss on this, I'm telling you that now. Uh, now we're going to go into black for the nose and round the gum areas because dogs have like a black gum. And <clears throat> as you can see, I'm using a very fine brush there, but I want to change the brush now to a bigger brush. And whenever you see me going into a pot on here, I will have a damp brush. It won't be a dry brush because I, I apply the paints thinly. So I'm always watering them down. But again, it's a damp brush. It's not dry. So I'm going over the hat with this slightly bigger brush. And as per usual with me, I miss a bit. <laughs> Yeah, it's not one of my videos if I don't miss something, but surprisingly enough, I did actually notice early on. So when I went back to the brush that I'm normally be using, I covered it. So there you go, I caught it that time. Right, so anything else for black? No, let's change to Flash Gitch Yellow, again by Citadel. And again, it's a case of damp brush, but I'm not happy with the way this is going on. It's going on too watery. So what I did was I actually mixed it with some other paints that were on the palette. So I do have my wet palette at the side of me, especially for the, uh, specifically for when I'm using things like uh, the dropper bottle brushes. Um, so I've mixed it that with uh, some of the Spaceship Exterior white that I've been using and the Jakiro Orange, just to make it as similar colour as I could, but a bit thicker with the Jakiro Orange being a base colour. It's a thicker colour, so it should hopefully go on better. And as you can see, it does. So if you want to uh, do a nice yellow base, I suggest uh, mixing with a Jakiro orange base and some a little bit of white. Mm, it worked for this particular job anyway. <laughs> right, so that's the uh, yellow. Uh, going back into the orange just to touch up on areas on the fur around the ear and back into the white then to touch up on the white areas to uh, shape those orange areas orange patches that you can see now let's have a try at the tunic that he's wearing and corn red yes corn red all over the tunic bright vivid colors because let's face it King Charles um, Cavalier. They always wore like vivid colours, fla very flouncy. <clears throat> so uh, that's the reason I've chose these colours. You can see that bright yellow flouncy blouse underneath the tunic shows quite distinctively and quite um, brightly. I think it stands out amazingly, to be honest. Um, it will be dulled down a little bit later because I will be putting a wash over the yellow areas and the white fur, but as I said, that will come later on and we will see what's happening then. <coughs> now, this is probably the third or fourth time I've been narrating this video. Um, late as the video seems to go on, the... Uh, video looks as though it seems to um, become quite jerky in its movements and I'm not sure where that's because I've been cutting things out and letting it run but yeah well now what was that oh yeah that was leather brown I noticed I had a leather brown I'd forgotten all about it to be honest uh, when I was doing the tunic I was wondering what kind of what color of leather I should use um, whether to mix the um, corn red with some of the Jacaro orange or what, what not to, uh, to make the leather corn. I've noticed it's leather brown, so what the heck, let's use it. Uh, so that's for the path, the patch, the pouch on the, uh, the pouch that's hanging by the uh, waist on his thigh and the belt around his waist and that little leather strap that's around his back left leg. I'm saying him because 
the mini is actually a male dog. Uh, just checking what colour the feather is there. And the feather is grey. So let's get some greyish colour there. It's not what I thought would be a grey. It's more like a greyish brown. So wasn't quite happy. So just put a bit of white in there and tried that and oh yes much better so we'll stick with that um and we'll come back later on and do some highlighting as well um one thing i did forget to do on this is highlight the or to do further highlights to the hat and the tunic and i also forgot to do the highlight for the scabbard um of the sword which um to be honest as i was painting this handle i went in to paint the uh, rest of it and thought hang on it'll be a scabbard not a sword that's not the blade it'll be the scabbard so I decided not to do that and instead went on to um, just paint the handle with the brown with the iron color and just a few patches of the orange here and there just to show a little bit of possible dirt or something on the feet and tail and as you can see they've mixed some colours together it's not um, it's not proper orange but it's a mix of different colours I can't remember which ones they are but we'll do something about that later on and now back into the rough iron for the um, metal parts of this patch that's on the hat it's a bone in a circle you'll see that very soon when we come round to painting it fully and adding the highlights um, but as I said, I forgot. Oh, this is where we do the soft tone wash over the fur and the yellow parts. Now, I did forget, as I say, to do any further highlighting to the, some, some parts of this and forgot totally to highlight the hat. Um, I'm going to be doing that off camera. Um, you're going to see the basics here of what I've done. I'll do some further highlighting off camera um, just to uh, make it look a bit nicer because. Yeah, he's a good friend and I thought what the heck I've got two of these minis so I might as well give him one of them now it's time for the base while we're waiting for the wash to dry so here's an MDF base it's actually a punch out of the um, punch out from the paint stand that I got from um, um, oh god where is it the same place that does rumble slam oh dear I can't remember what it's called <laughs> I really can't remember but anyway I got this base and tried a bit of cork chipping or cork chips from a case that I have of bits and pieces they didn't quite look right so got a, a mat a table protector mat broke some off and put that on quite like the look of that so we'll stick with that one a bit of wood glue it's gorilla glue it sticks cork to mdf really really well it sticks wood to wood really really well it doesn't do too good for her so I'll try to avoid that one keep it for what it's intended for yeah so um smush it about i put a bit too much on there and it's oozed out quite a bit but yeah, well, give it a wipe off with a bit of kitchen towel, and then we can put some little bits of sand and stone around it. I think this is just like ballast from um, what you call it a model railway scenics kind of stuff, and we'll get a what you call it an emery board and just give it a sand around the edges just to make it nice and smooth uh, make sure the sand is off it and just give it a, a good um, surface to paint onto nice smooth surface to paint onto make sure that the dog can fit on there and uh, then rip off a few pieces to make it look a bit more natural happy with that so let's go back to the dog just to make sure everything's okay there's a bit of pooling going on so we'll spread that out a little bit because uh, we don't want too much pooling and we'll wait for it to dry it's dry <laughs> um okay so let's pop the base away and re-establish these white areas 
Um, you know, just painting over anywhere that we want white. Uh, we're not going fully over the white. We are just doing little patches here in the as a highlight because we want the wash to look as though it's shadows and um, in the reset and recessed areas. So that's what we're going. That's why we're doing this. So any raised areas we can do with this white, and it'll look good. The tail just brush across the or yeah just brush across the uh, tail and that way the ridges will pick up the paint and the de and the recesses won't the same with the her and the jacairo orange um oh sorry in the e fur on the on the ears not her the fur on the ears um same again use the side of the brush to um whiz over the recesses or whiz over the highlights higher points so they would pick up the texture the texture picks up the paint I'll get this right eventually <laughs> so uh, into the yellow now and we'll just add a few uh, little spots of yellow here and there to bring out any raised areas and push the darker recessed areas further back that raised leg one is uh, quite flat so do what you can on that one. Incubate darkness now and on this one we are going to be going round the brim of the hat. Uh, there's like a nice sewn brim to the hat so we're going over that and we'll also go over the um, well, the band that goes around the crown. As you will see in a second. There we go. Yes it's just that uh, band that goes around the crown of the hat that's uh, for that part and we'll also do this patch here the internal parts in inside the uh, metallic circle now let's try scream of pink for the red highlights uh, no let's not try scream of pink for the red highlights let's instead try evil sun scarlet because that would be a much better idea <laughs> uh, scream, of, uh, scream of pink is a bit too close to corn red so if we do um, this nice evil sun scarlet it will stand out just that little bit more and what we could also do um, or what I will also do later on as I said when I'm highlighting off camera I'll just add a little bit of yellow into that to make it just a touch brighter and then just put that on the extreme highlights and that should work wonders but I can play about that to my leisure um, now just going over the feather one more time and I've added a little bit more white into the dark stone and roughly very roughly and very lightly waft the brush across the feather that will give it a very feathery look because of the brush strokes in it and uh, it will also pick out the highlights as well and now once more we're going back into the yellow to add just a touch more light or highlights to the yellow and being a bit more pedantic on where I'm putting the yellow on that raised leg works wonders uh, now we are going into screen the pink and we're doing the tongue um, what well, yeah dogs have a nice pink tongue and we're going to add just a little bit of white into that just to go around the edges of the tongue to make it look a little less flat lovely next <coughs> I think what we can do is go over the metal areas with this gold color and I realize watching this video back that I've forgotten to paint the handle of the sword in fact I forgot the sword altogether so we'll be going back to do that once more and we're getting a brighter gold I cannot for the life remember what it says I know it's one from Ermi Painter I think it's greedy gold or something like that um, I added a bit too much so I decided to go over again with the Inky by Darkness and went over some of the gold parts this is the fun bit because Let's face it, you're going, you're painting something because you've accidentally gone over it 
and trying to correct it or adjust it and then you go over the bits that you shouldn't have gone over and you're backwards and forwards yeah well let's do the base now shall we <laughs> yes i'll just go and get my blue glove on and uh, get my priming spray and we can give this a jolly good squirt there we go so yep there's a there we go cover it completely in the black spray making sure that there is no cork or uh, mdf base showing it doesn't matter about the bottom of it but as long as there's nothing on the top that's showing um you're fine and then once it's dried we can come in with a dirt splatter i think it was called and give it a good coverage with that now i didn't leave it long enough to dry um so this uh, there will be some black streaks in this as well but it makes it look a little more interesting i think and i also painted the base the mdf base uh, with this brown as well and to be honest i didn't really like it once i'd finished but you'll see what i did with it later on and yeah, we just make sure that everywhere is covered in this brown colour. It looks like a, a toffee crisp bite, or whatever you want to call it. I think that's what it's called. You know, the the, the ones that you get in a, a pack and you just bite size bits of toffee crisp. That's what it looks like at the moment to me anyway. <coughs> but it will look slightly different by the time I've finished. We just need to let it dry though that's the thing the trick is when you're tr trying to do stuff let the paint dry first and you probably get a much better um what we call it you get a much better result now we'll spend some time ripping the base or snipping the base off the actual mini <coughs> this is fun i got myself an another pair of snips because the other ones i had the blades were chipped and whatnot from cutting the wrong things with them um and all i did was basically go around and snip them all off i've left directly under the feet on because i want these to stick into the um into the cork as you can see the make a few indents with this into the cork so you can see what's what's that is not going to that's not achieving much so let's get a knife and we can d dig in with a knife let's get a bit better with that there we are so now we've got that bit done we can mark out properly the mid the third point of contact or second point of contact and then we can notch out a bit for the back at the first point of contact there i'm happy with that all done uh, just make sure the holes are okay that will do nicely I think so what we can do now is um, what did we do now oh yes we um, decided to trim down the bottom of the feet a little more to make them more pointed and to take up a little less space but yet again still giving us that um, amount of surface area to glue into and once we've got that done we can get um, our sand coloured paint on a dry palette big brush and dry brush from the top to the bottom of this to take off that rather plain and boring looking brown colour from the cork and this is where I realised that I don't like the look of the base so what I do is I bring out the black and I just paint the base around the base black like I do with quite a lot of other models uh, just paint them black sometimes the brown works sometimes it doesn't um, I used to paint most of my models brown, but that's when I had really brightly coloured models. 
on top of it but when I've got like brownish colors and muted colors models and things on top of the base I, I like to use um, a black base now I'll get some super glue this is the mitre fast super glue we'll pop some of that onto the dog and spray the base with activator and pop the dog on top there we go all done it's still looking as though he stood on a, a mound of chocolate so let's do something about that shall we red and yellow flowers would be nice because it were in red and yellow so let's get some super glue on the base again uh, get one of the tufts off with a pair of tweezers and pop the flowers on and then put some more super glue down and pop another sprig of the flowers on and that will end up looking really really nice anyway we're coming to the end of the video but when I fin when the this fast forward bit uh, finishes um, I'll, I'll have a, a clear view of the mini itself but now I've done this one put, put some more podge on the flat areas and then sprinkle on a nice bit of static grass Yes, there we are. Make it look like he's on a, a grassy mound rather than a, a rocky outcrop. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I really do hope that my friend likes the mini when it's finished. But until next time, as always, stay safe and take care. God bless and bye for now.